Hi everyone, this is Gary. Uh, Val and I were down in Punta Gorda, Florida at Dr. Moore's Level 1 class. And the reason that I am making this video is because Dr. Morse granted us an interview. And that's what I'm going to share with you now. But I just wanted to set this up, say thank you to Dr. Morse, the staff who was incredible the whole time. And like I said, if you ever get a chance to go to Level 1, please do it. The people you will meet there will blow your mind. They are so amazing. So, remember, I love you all. And, without further ado, here is the interview we got to do with Dr. Morse. So we're here with Dr. Morse at Level 1 Training in Port of, what is it? Punta Gorda. Punta Gorda, Florida. I have a hard time saying that. Yeah, Punta. Punta Gorda. Punta Gorda, Florida. And we have a few questions we'd like to ask. And one is, uh, why did you decide to start sharing the knowledge that you share with people on a worldwide level? Well, that's an interesting question. <laughs> you know, back when I was uh, living in my Volkswagen van as a fruitarian, uh, I was connecting with some of the spiritual masters, ascended masters and the like. So I was always out of my body more and more, and they started opening me up to the fact that why I was put here. And so as I progressed in my spiritual understanding and awakening, uh, I've been working with spiritual masters all over the place. And I, I've come to the awareness that I'm a way shower. And this is just, I've always had that need to open that up to the public, always. Uh, when I got out of extreme fasting, I went and opened up health food stores because I knew that I had to share this information, it had to come out. But there's a lot more yet to come out that's not just health. The ride is very uh, conscious. This is about waking up to who you are and the conscious awareness of that. And that's the key. This diet and getting the physical machine healthy is only the modus operandi to getting into that soul or that awareness and opening it up. So this is why you see us teach so much about mind writing and the fact that the mind is what limits you. The Christianity, Christianity, they call it taking from the tree of knowledge that brings you down into creation. And that's the mind. So we teach people how not to think so much. Get out of your mind, get out of your emotions, kick back, and learn to be who you really are. And that's our ultimate goal. And so the health is just getting the human's bodies healthy so they can achieve this even faster and better. Then we also have advanced souls coming to this planet to help the planet, and they're in these genetically weak bodies. So we're trying to fix these little bodies up genetically to get these souls to have good bodies so they can make a big difference on this planet. So spiritually, there's tons of stuff coming to this planet that it hasn't seen yet. Many people have been asking online what you eat on a daily basis. Well, what I eat on a daily basis, I always incorporate the fruit for breakfast concept. Central. So I always have my watermelon or oranges. I generally limit it that myself. I have mangoes or I have mangoes and bananas. Most of the time I try to have a good watermelon or I have navel orange juice is my favorite. For lunch, depends where I'm at. Mostly because I'm in practice and very busy, I do a salad. You know, at night is my time where I kind of peace. I'll peace on uh, fruit. Uh, if there's junk or something, maybe I'll have a cookie or something. Just depends the stress of the day, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, once in a while, uh, I'll shake it up and go to a, a salad bar or something and pick up a few other things on the salad bar like anybody would. Okay. What's next on that? What do you feel the greatest healing modality is that people can practice as a beginner? Well, naturopathy to me is just simply the greatest healing modality out there. And true naturopathy is truly the science of nature. And naturopathy being the science of nature takes in chemistry and physics. <laughs> Always, right? But this is why we teach chemistry and physics. We show you through your sciences exactly what you're doing wrong and how to fix that. And so that's why this class, you see how we talk and why I brought you down through the God rules and how creation is made. And when you understand how creation is put together, 
and how what you're using to experience here to express yourself here then you start to be able to have the tools to back up from that too you know there's a lot of souls on this planet right now it's time to go and they don't know how to go and that's another thing that's going on here is introducing everyone to how you pull back from these lower worlds these material worlds so there's a lot going on on a lot of levels most of it is all God awareness levels because God's pulling itself back into itself again. And so you see such negativity out there. And it's just, you see that change. And so you'll see a lot of spiritual beings here working with this. There's a lot of ascended masters. There's so many spiritual beings working with people on this planet right now. It's amazing. Never seen it so much. And so uh, everyone can get their remedy no matter what level they're at. Awesome. Uh what do you feel the biggest stumbling block is people when they first start coming to see you the biggest stumbling block that they have to their simplify minds. Yeah. their minds their minds and emotions you know when you're here as consciousness you have to have a mind and you have to have emotions I mean, we covered that in that how the god worlds are set up creation so the mind is a very conditioned instrument it's like kind of like a um, a uh, CD when you're recording and it's it, once you record it just seems to see the same track So like the phonograph that has the same grooves and it's difficult to wake up out of that mind Most people are lost in their thinking and they, they chase their thoughts, but it isn't who they are They're just playing the game of creation uh, uh, Of a soap opera so their life is a soap opera and we pull this and this in but it isn't who you are so when you pull back from thinking and you take a break from the mind, you start to become awake again. And you realize you've been playing with the mind. You've been playing with the tools that are given you to experience. Emotions are the same way. You get beat up so bad that you just become detached. You say, I don't care anymore. But that frees you. That's an old Buddha thing, detachment. So when you learn to kick back from the desires of this world and the thoughts of this world, pretty soon you run into yourself. And that expands you incredibly. And that's what this is about. And you can go from there. Thank you, Dr. Morris. You're welcome. We appreciate it. We love being so here. Uh, Everybody get to level yeah. one. Isn't that fun? Absolutely. This level one has been a good one. You guys have been super great. Amazing. A lot. You guys are allowing that energy to come through because that has to happen as well. If people block it, then you can't get through to them. That's why we do the health, to come around and open them up so they quit blocking their, their awareness, their, their growth. So, we so, have a little... so would you say level one is about the first step of letting go of the mind? I think it is. I think it is. But yeah. you can practice this at home by just not thinking, just working in the now. And the best way to do this is just become the observer, like you are observing something for the first time. You know, when you go somewhere for the first time, your mind isn't engaged. It's watching and, and, and analyzing and categorizing from its past experiences, but you as consciousness are looking intently at the experience. Pretty soon then the mind comes in and dictates the comparisons of past experiences and things, and then pretty soon you, the mind takes over and you lose awareness. You lost observation, exchange for thought. And so this is, this is what's trapping people down here, but that's the game. So the duality is thinking is judgment and you want intuitiveness. Right, exactly. If you're working from the outer that way, intuitiveness means you're, you're starting to listen from within. There's an old saying on this planet that you have to go within to get out. So you go into meditation. All that means is you're shutting down the mind and emotions on the outside and becoming who you are, really who you are. See, so people don't realize the mind isn't who you are. It's a tool you're using to experience here. But no one tells people that too much, and a lot of people don't know that because they're in their minds. Mm -hmm. So to break that hold, and that'll lift the awareness of this planet considerably. But you see it's such a warring planet because the grooves of the mind are stuck here. So this, the planet is being highly infused on all levels with a lot of us. Remember I told you earlier, when I came here, I brought a lot of beings with me, and you're starting to see them pop up all over the place. Absolutely. You, thank you for everything that you do and the, all that you share. I, I mean, it is amazing. I enjoy, to be honest with you. I'm 100% a God man. There's nothing I care anymore. Nothing matters. Creation really doesn't matter. So. Same with all of you guys. You can become way showers. You can work with the God forces and all the spiritual beings to help others to expand. Or you can become the creative uh, dreamer yourself. 
a conscious creative dreamer, which expands the creation like nobody's business. So you'll find you, there's so many different things you can do when you wake up and quit playing the soap opera of the physical world. Do you awesome. Have a different message for like younger people, my, my channel audience, for some reason, is mostly 20 to 25 year olds. Seems like mine is getting that way too. You know athletes, why? Yeah. Well, because you're getting into more of the spiritual beings here that are here to help. Right. They're, in, they're, in, they're younger beings, but they're in younger bodies. They're not, that doesn't mean they're younger beings, but they, they're in younger bodies. And that's why I keep telling you, some of these babies, these are high powerful souls coming into these genetically mutated bodies. So once we get these bodies turned around, you'll see just what's going to happen here. But they seem to be as stressed as someone, like I'm in my 40s, and I've got to take this seriously, I'm diabetic, they're, 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 they have no symptoms, they're pretty lean, mm -hmm. they're pretty fit, mm -hmm. and they seem very stressed about what to eat. And so what's your message for them well, to, like, to approach this in a more joyful way? Well, the message to, the, to those souls that are in younger bodies is that start waking up to why you're here. You know, because before it's pretty much you come to the planet, you play the drama, whatever it is, and then you die or you translate your body goes and you keep going down that road. But the message is waking up from that cycle of birth and reincarnation, that sort of thing, and becoming awake. Well, a lot of souls are here to introduce that to the world, but they're trapped. So this is why we're, we're trying to get people to stop thinking. And that way, and step back at least from the mind a little bit, and start to understand who they really are. And when that happens, some of these younger beings that you're talking about will start to understand that they're here for a much higher purpose. And you'll start to see that. And they will start to see that. And especially these younger guys. You know, your babies coming up, your, your teenagers, your 20-year-olds. You know, see, this world pulls you into it and you get so lost in the experience that you forget who you are and why you're even here. Some are just here to experience and to grow and to become the creative dreamer themselves. Others are here to help that process. And then others are so trapped, you know, you're here to wake that up. So they should probably worry less about how much fat they're eating, because that's their big concern, like is fat species. The physical body, you know, separate the physicalness of life and the consciousness of life. So the physical human body, the homo sapien body, is a primate body, an advanced primate body, that is a frugivore. And the problem is when you eat outside of that, that pulls you down. And then it's just like thought. Your diet is just like thought. It connected to thought and desire. That's why it's sometimes hard to change if you don't grow spiritually. Because your very frequency that you created is aligned with the type of food you're eating. And you notice that as soon as you eat raw foods, and especially the fruits, everything starts changing in consciousness, not just physically. Everything, the mind quiets down. The emotions, the desires, the hyperactivity quiets down. You start to see more, know more. And that's what that's about. So it's just, and it's inter notice how it's just being introduced. It was introduced slowly through these ages. You know, look at uh, uh, the mucus diet healing system, all the air and stuff. So it's been introduced slowly, not like ever before. But now you're seeing also the spiritual beings coming in with this. Everything is coming down on this planet and this physical universe. Good. Needs awesome. Needs yeah. Last one from my life is um, for athletes, people who want to be athletes. Sure. Are there distinct stages? Because it, I feel you tell you, you say things like eat less to detox more, mm -hmm. but being an athlete is a building up. So, and they're, they're not necessarily. They're, they're confused about how many calories yeah. to eat. What the, like some of them eating like 3,000, 4,000 calories yeah. a day. What do you think about that? I don't get into calorie thinking okay. because we're more into energy thinking. Yeah. You know, you can have, uh, for example, you know, we talked about we have Mr. Olympian, we have uh, uh, you see Anton in there, and he's a trainer, a pro uh, bodybuilder, now a trainer of bodybuilders. They're understanding that what they've been doing in the past has broken down their kidneys, and of course, rheumatoid arthritis and some of these devastating, highly acidic problems are, are happening to them. So, if you want to focus that much attention on your physical body only, then you want to do it properly. Because if you don't, you pay the price. And once you mutate the body, you're locked in there if you don't learn how to get it separate from that. So you're locked into the pain, and of course they lose their elbows, they lose everything else, their joints, their hips, their knees. So if you're an athlete, it isn't about calories, it's about removing the obstruction to the flow of energy. We can show you a free, I told you about the Stanford uh, study. But when you remove the flow of energy, it's not about how big these are, it's how much power do you, or energy, do you channel through them. And so when you remove the obstructions and you move more to a base balance in the body, 
the energy just soars and the power, you feel your muscles, you almost feel like your muscles are growing and the endurance just becomes endless. I have some, trained so many people that have endless endurance. On a fruit diet. On a fruit, oh, oh yeah. particularly on a fruit diet because if you're a runner and you're eating meat, you, 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 all right, you, you're not gonna even match a frugivore. What about starches? Mm -hmm. What about starches, potatoes, rice? Those are some of the worst things you can eat. Okay. You know, we are a starch meat planet. And the problem is that's why everybody's suffering. So once you get away from that and turn to the live foods, if you want muscle, you're an athlete, if you want to be strong, why would you eat dead food? Remember, movement and activity is an energetic experience, not a calorie experience, an energetic experience. And once you remove that and you're eating high energy foods, you can keep on going. Remember that tribe, I forget, New Guinea or somewhere, that they take off on a 26 mile run? Their respirations, their, their blood pressures, everything is the same when they get back as when they started. And that's the point. Look at that guy now that's on the news that can run 350 miles without stopping. Okay, That's where you can go. Because it's the acids that build up in activity that start to slow you down. They become restrictive to the flow of energy. Once you learn how to get all that moving, you have no restriction of energy. You have endless endurance, agility, speed. We have kickboxers. You know, We have a pro kickboxer. He's on, I think, next month or something. They brought him out of retirement to fight. Been on Raw. It's going to be interesting to see his speed and agility because that's where it's at. You know, when you're a fighter, you want speed and agility. Yeah. You want speed, but you want to be able to see and comprehend moves before they are. And that's the point. If you're out of your mind and what you said in intuitiveness, then you can perceive quick and you have the agility to do that. As you bulk up with proteins and things like that, you lose that agility for bulk. And that's not good. One check, you know, replaces another. So sometimes less bulk and more power gains you a higher level. Mm -hmm. So man just has to learn that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we saw Nick Diaz in the UFC, who's a raw foodist, just beat one of the uh, champions recently. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so that. with a bodybuilder though, it's, it's difficult because detoxification means you're gonna lose some stuff. Yeah. If you put that muscle on with proteins, it's gonna come off. Yeah. It's just gonna come That's off. Exactly put it on wrong. Yeah. That's what the Hodge twins did. They were right. vegan and they said, we've gone back because we're losing our body and our body is our business. Yeah, it's but look at that. Yeah, yeah, but get it back. There's a lot of bodybuilders who are getting it back and now they're healthily getting it back. Right. Now they have more speed, endurance, and happiness mm -hmm. in their own personal lives. Because everyone has to pull back and realize you don't have to be the greatest for everybody out there. Connect to yourself. See what your drama is. See who you are. And that way you'll, you'll have a much happier, more fulfilled life and then this planet won't suck you into it. What do you say to people who struggle to stay stay on the fruits mentally? Well, you don't have to struggle. always be a fruititarian. I don't. Right. I don't think the Homo sapiens species has that level ability yet. Uh, even in my body here, I have to ground out, or my body just fries. So I have to ground out sometimes with cooked vegetables and stuff. And you'll see that. Uh, I've had people call me and say, "What do I do now? I'm in trouble. I, I have so much energy, I can't stop it. So eat some cooked food." You know, mm -hmm. to ground yourself, okay. because balance is key, essential to this. You don't have to be a fruitarian, but if you want to get into the body and regenerate it, how interestingly, you have to be on that high fruit, berry, melon level. But you can have salads and stuff like that. Steamed vegetables. Takes away energy. You can have steamed vegetables, but it yeah. takes away energy. That's okay when you have so much you can't stand. But if you don't, and you want to develop that, those are not the foods to eat. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. You. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you.